Well, hello YouTubers, Mike here. Welcome back to my channel. And yes, those are mountains on the horizon. Yes, Toto, I don't think we're in Florida anymore. We are in Wyoming, at our Wyoming ranch out here. We got a 40 acre ranch, lots of outbuildings, guest house, main house, mountains all around. Nice view of Ocean Lake over there. Anyway, what's this video about? Well, I get requests for more astronomy content from time to time. So, we're back at the Ocean Lake Observatory right here on our property. Got a nice observatory here with a 14-inch telescope in it. Some other good stuff, too. I'll give you a look around. Pardon the ladder. I was up on the roof doing some work on the weather station we have out here so we can monitor what's going on out here when we're not here. So we've been out here in, in Wyoming for about a month, which is why you haven't seen many new videos on this channel. And you probably won't see this one for a while because our internet out here in the back of beyond the Wyoming is next to non-existent. So I can record videos, I just can't upload them. So by the time you see this, we'll probably be back in Florida. All right, so let me give you a look around the Ocean Lake Observatory. For those of you who haven't uh, seen it before, it does star prominently in some of my videos. We've got a roll-off roof. The roof up here rolls back and exposes the telescope in the left side of the building over here. The right side of the building is what's called the warming room, which in Wyoming is wonderful. <laughs> Let me tell you, it's almost June, but the temperatures at night are still getting down in the 30s and 40s. And in the winter, you know, minus 20 to minus 30. So having a room where you can run a heater and sit in there and run the telescope, it's great. So... The telescope, of course, is going to be open to the sky once the roof is rolled back. And whatever the temperature is outside, that's the temperature in there. You want to do as much work as possible from the warming room. All right, let me give you a look around. We'll give you a look at the warming room first, then we'll look at the telescope proper and show you, so, and show you some of the exciting changes that have happened here. So what's the warming room? Well, it's just like a little office off the side of the observatory where I can have a heater and I can stay warm at night and I can uh, put my laptop up here and my tablet up here and I can stack photos and uh, run the telescope and take new photos and whatnot. So it's just a great little room in Wyoming. It's a must have. What else have we got in here? Well, this is where I store my 10 inch Dobsonian telescope, totally manual telescope. I built this telescope myself. I can just take it outside, point it at things um, just on the spur of the moment, and sometimes I'll do that while the telescope, the Bain telescope, is running through an observing program. Anyway, I built this whole telescope myself, like I said, including the primary mirror. I cast that mirror out of glass in my kiln, and I ground and polished it myself. So when people look at my telescope and say, did you build this? I'd like, take a seat, get comfortable. I've got a story to tell because from very beginning to very end, it's all me. I built it and it works great. And what else have we got in the warming room? Well, we've got some storage back here in these cabinets, lots of posters on the walls and some of my wife's equipment. She's getting into the hobby too. She was out taking Milky Way photos last night with her equipment. I'll try to include one here. And uh, we're just storing it in here for the moment. Hopefully it will be clear enough again tonight to do some more observing, although I don't know. We've got a lot of cirrus. There's a storm front coming through in a couple of days and this cirrus seems to be in the advance of it. We may not get to use the, the observatory again, but I'll show you what we did last night after I show you what's going on over here in the observatory side proper. So over here, we've got a C-14 telescope on a tripod mount on a concrete pad, which goes all the way down to the foundation, so it's nice and stable. And like I said, the roof rolls off. we got four clamps, one at each corner, that hold the roof on. And I can loosen those and just roll the roof back that away and open the whole thing up to the sky. That's what I did last night. So what's uh, new and exciting here? Well, you know, the last video I did about the Ocean Lake Observatory, um, I already had some of these accessories on it. I already had the Hyperstar 
on the front to give it to make it an F2 telescope. F2. Man, that's fast. I already had my Zewo ASI 294 MC Pro camera on it at prime focus. So that's not new. What is new? Now the telescope has sprouted a whole lot of new red accessories. We've got an ASI Air Mini up here to run everything. And I mean everything. This runs the whole thing except for rolling the roof off. I still have to do that manually. But this does everything else. Um, it runs the whole telescope, runs the mount. Um, I've got a cable here going into the bottom of the hand controller. It goes up to the uh, ASI Air Mini and it runs the mount. Points the telescope where I want it to point. Over here, got the uh, Zewo EAF electronic automatic focuser attached to the telescope. That is new and that is exciting. Focusing this thing has always been a challenge. But with this, it is just simple. I just hit a button on the tablet, it goes through its automatic focus routine, focuses the telescope just tack sharp, and we're ready to uh, image. I had a little trouble. Um, it took me, you know, I've been out here for about a month, and it took me um, a, a quite a while to get all this stuff onto the telescope, integrated and working, especially the focuser. Because this model of telescope, this particular model of C14, was only made briefly. The model before it was made for a long time, the model after it is still being made, been made for a long time. This was made briefly, and the focuser is a little bit different. So, the shaft coupler didn't fit. I had to uh, open that out to make it fit. And the screws they provided in the kit didn't work either. So I had to go to the hardware store in town and get the right kind of screws. Eventually, I got it mounted. It's working great. Uh, over here, I've got the ASI 120 Mini guide camera on the 60 millimeter guide scope on the side of this big telescope. This works great. My guiding is generally less than half an arc second. Sometimes down in the tenth or two of arc second. So the guiding is just incredible with this setup. I love it. What else is new? Well, I've got this Duke controller here, which I built. I'm kind of handy like that. So this can control actually a whole lot of different um, dew heaters. At the moment, I only have a heater for the big corrector plate out here to keep it from doing up. Here's the heater band right here. Um, I need to get another heater for the guide scope. So that's on my that's on my to-do list. Another heater for the guide scope. Uh, also have a tell rad on here, which I use for not nearly as much as I used to because, well, everything's automatic now. It's great. Everything's automatic. Um, I still have my... Uh, QHY pole master here, but I'll tell you what, this is just held on with a magnet. I don't need it anymore. The, the ASI Air Mini can polar align this thing through plate solving and tell me how I need to move the screws on the mount to polar align it. So I don't need the pole master anymore. Anybody want to buy a pole master? It may show up used somewhere soon. Anyway, so that's the exciting changes here at the Ocean Lake Observatory. This, this is so automatic. I can sit over in the warming room with my tablet and run a program of photography. And uh, since we've been out here, I've done some amazing photos of uh, the trio of galaxies in LEO. M51, M81 and M82, M101. Just, and we have not had that many clear nights. But F2, at F2, I can go, and no filters. There's no light pollution out here in Wyoming. I don't need any filters. So I am getting an incredible amount of light to the camera. With 30-second exposures, I can get, you know, a lot of exposures in an hour. It doesn't take long. Just through a gap in the clouds, a brief window of clear weather, I can get enough exposures to make some really pretty pictures. So let me show you some of what I've been doing out here. So this first image is of the trio of galaxies up in Leo. Um, it is a stack of 27 60-second subframes. I didn't even have the autofocus working 
at this point. I mean, everything else was working, but not the autofocus. So I think this turned out pretty good. Um, I switched later on to doing shorter subframes, 30 seconds, just because of F2. I was blowing out the detail in a lot of brighter galaxies. So I was doing more, more subframes of uh, 30 seconds. So case in point, here is an image of M101. Now this is a stack of 90 30 second subframes. Look at the detail in that. My goodness, that's great. Uh, by this time, I had the autofocus working too, and uh, everything was just going really smoothly. I, I, I think this is a really great image of M101. I might be a little biased, but I think it is. And lastly, here is an image of M51. So this is 40 30 second subframes. Um, clouds cut me off. I wanted to gather more data on this object, but uh, it was starting to get cloudy. So I had to shut down, but still, uh, look at this. With only 40, 30 second subframes, I think this is one of my best astrophotos ever, if not my best so far. And look at the background galaxies. Look at, look at, the, look at them, look at the detail in the two interacting galaxies, the color. Oh my goodness, this turned out absolutely great. Um, can you imagine if I doubled the subframes, how good this would look? Maybe I'll get another chance. Hopefully we can get out here and do some more imaging tonight and maybe get another object or two. But I don't know if we're going to get one tonight. It was looking fairly promising for a while, but it's getting thick. It's, it's coming in off the mountains over there and there's more behind it. I was looking at the satellite images. So I don't know if we'll actually get to use the Ocean Lake Observatory anymore while we're out here because we are going home again soon. But, uh, oh man, have I enjoyed the little bit of time I have had to use it out here on this trip. And I am looking forward to getting back out here again in the future just as soon as humanly possible. Well, there you go. There's your requested astronomy content. I hope you found it interesting, educational, informative, inspirational, whatever. Look at the stars. If so, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to see future videos. Thanks a lot for watching this video. See you in the next one. Bye.